patiently oh, with I'm us, very, I'm a patient and guy. we've had the chance to fellowship with him. We did. We bumped earlier on in the afternoon. We've just been having a grand old time here. Andrew, welcome to 2011, thank and you. thank you so much for being a sponsor of Just Here for the Beer Radio. Yeah, thank you very much. Very happy to be here. Yeah. What was your uh, Christmas and New Year's experience like? It was great. I didn't get to travel, but I got to try some beers from all over the world, so for me, it's just as good as traveling. Right? Well, so. now, let's, let's break that down. Before you go on to the rest of the world, where do you think Canada, and where do you think specifically the West Coast ranks in the world beer structure? Well, being a part of the of the beer industry here in BC, I'm I'm really impressed with what all of the brewers in BC are doing. You have to excuse my voice. I was at the Seahawks game on Sunday. <laughs> and I did a lot of yelling. And yeah, I bet you did. Seemed to work. But uh, yeah. I'm really impressed with what the brewers are doing here in BC, and each brewery seems to challenge the other, uh, the other, the other brewery. And uh, we're starting to pump out some really really good beers. But uh, Canada ranks pretty high as far as I'm concerned in terms of uh, new beer development in BC. I mean, in the, in the world. Yeah. And you know what? One of the things that we were talking about off-air is that we're sort of at the epicenter of where things are happening in Canada right now. Well, we definitely are. Like, if you look at uh, Portland, just overtook uh, uh, Munich as the beer capital of the world, right? Yeah. That's a significant event for the Pacific Northwest. Uh, and we're a stone throw away from that. So, and that can't go well in Germany. I'm guessing they no. t- because I mean, <laughs> again, when you talk about tradition, we're talking about going back historically. When people think of beer, yeah. you would probably think some of the best beers come from Germany. For the fact that West Coast North America mm. can surpass Germany, I think one of the challenges that Germany has is that uh, they're very traditional in their approach to beer, right? Whereas what we have out here on the West Coast is we're a new place. And uh, we're allowed to experiment. There's, we, there's no traditional Vancouver beer. There's no traditional BC beer. So we're allowed to experiment. And, and I think that's what sets us apart. And that's why I think the West Coast is doing such a great job at, uh, at uh, being a, fourth, a leader in the beer industry in, in North America. And you know what? Maybe Surrey will overtake them, uh, Listen, Portland soon the, as well. Listen, in the World Beer Cup, yes. Canada won seven medals. Yes. And, and, and Surrey won three of them. Yes, I know. So we're very proud in Surrey. Yeah. To, to it must be great water and uh, great people doing great products. It is fantastic products. water, yeah. Um, Andrew, yeah. in front of us, we have three big bottles, uh, your signature well, series beers. Please tell us a little bit about the, the remains of three. The yeah. remains <laughs> of three, yeah. yeah. Uh, I brought in today, I brought uh, uh, the, the We Angry Scotch Ale and our IPA. Both of these two uh, brands the, uh, won bronze medals at the World Beer Cup. Fantastic beers, big beers, only available in the 650 mil, so you can't get in the, in the 340, 41 mil bottle or in a can. And then we launched today our Blood Alley Bitter, which is a brand new ESB English style uh, extra special bitter. It's got 50 IBUs for those beer geeks that are listening to the show. Uh, and of course, IBUs are for people that don't know yeah. is how they measure the bitterness. Correct. Thank yeah. you, Beer Geek. <laughs> but, it, but it's a, a very smooth um, liquid, uh, well crafted by our brewmaster, Jack Bensley. And uh, I'm very proud of it. Yep. You know what? Here's another Jack that's really on board with this beer. I tried it for the first time today. Um, you know, it's very. It has that cl- palate cleansing sort of experience, and yeah. it's really, really nice drinking beer. Yeah. I, when you were actually sipping it, you took more than a couple sips, and and that's sort of what you said. You want to make beers that people can drink. That's correct. Uh, what's what's characteristic for Russell is we like to make beers that are flavorful, that have a lot of character, that are nice on the nose, but that you can drink one, more than one of. So that's very characteristic for our style of beers, right? How did you guys come up with the name for that beer? <laughs> Blood Alley Bitter? Yes. <clears throat> uh, to be dead honest with you, um, my uh, one of our sales guys that works for us was driving around town, and the one place that he was uh, d- 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 a little ner- nervous to go down was Blood Alley. Yeah. And uh, he, he texts me one day, he goes, hey, what, what about Blood Alley Bitter? And I'm like, bam, I called Jack, our brewer. I'm like, I got a name, you got to come up with a beer. And uh, that's where it, where it came from. Is yeah. that one of those things that happens, spur of the moment, a lot of times you guys just come up with things? <laughs> well, absolutely. I, I, for, from our perspective, as I said on the last show that I was here, our brewer is a challenge to make a new beer every 90 days, right? So all of us in the company are thinking, okay, we need something new. And and uh, I can, I'm, I'm pretty pleased to say that uh, just yesterday, we began our first barrel-aged program, so we've got uh, 2,000 liters right now that are aged in uh, bourbon barrels, and we've got another um, 90 barrels on the, on the en route. Now, yeah. I wanted to ask you about that, because to the non-beer uh, specialist, for example, how does that change the flavor profile? I mean, we, we know in wines that, yeah. that it does. What does it do for beer? Well, when, when we are aging in barrels, we're typically using barrels that have already been used to manufacture some kind of alcoholic beverage, right? So you can use a wine barrel, or you can use a bourbon barrel, or a whiskey barrel, or whatever you want to call it. But so the when we when we buy our bourbon barrels, believe it or not, there's 80 proof 
bourbon that's still sitting in that barrel. It's soaked into the wood. Mm-hmm. No, it, oh, it's actually there's in actual, the barrel. You can, it sloshes around a, okay. a tiny bit. I'm talking minuscule amounts. Yeah. But right. So you do get a slight um, uh, flavor of the, the alcohol that was in that barrel. And secondly, it, it's, of course, uh, French oak or American oak. So, so depending on how long you leave it in there, you will get an oaky flavor too. One of the things that people that might not understand about what this sort of process does, it adds some great complexity to the beer Fantastic, and some yeah. great flavor. It really yeah. smooths out some of the um, yeah. stronger flavors of the uh, ingredients. Now, you also have a couple of other things um, brewing up at Russell. Uh, could, could you share a couple sure, of yeah, other things with us as we've well? We've got a couple of new brews that are coming. I can't tell you what the, exactly what they are. But uh, we've got a couple of uh, we've we've exper- our, our brewers experimented with some high alcohol beers. Very cool. So we're looking at a ten and a half to eleven percent beers, and um, um, I was I wasn't going to say it, but we are we are launching a a wheat wine in Canada. So it's fifty five percent wheat. It's it's somewhat similar to a uh, to a barley wine, but of course it's uh, it's primarily wheat. Andrew Harris is the president of Russell Brewing Company. When when you say things like you can't say, is <laughs> well, it no, but is it yeah. because of the competitive nature of the beer industry? Yeah, it's uh, yes. Okay. To be dead honest with you, um uh you know, we we find that uh, the, the strength that Russell has is that we can change our direction, our strategic plan at uh, in a very short period of time. So, we've actually moved down this route to 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 explore big beer, what we call big beers. We started with the ang- what I call angry beers, actually. So we started with the wee angry Scotch ale, and so we're exploring these big beers, and they're a small batch, and we want to we like to we like to be first to market with it. So that's why I'm I'm just yeah a no little, and I'm a little bit uh, coy. About I it, think yeah. that it's really important that yeah. breweries sort of keep a little bit of um, mystique and sure. you know keep it mysterious and because it makes it adds to it. Absolutely, and if it doesn't work. We don't send it out to market, so I don't want to be sending anything out, say, saying anything out yeah. that doesn't. Uh, Andrew, I also yeah. wanted to ask you, because you've just launched the Blood Alley Bitter yeah. today, January today, 4th, and yeah. what better timing to be on just sure. here for the Beer Radio. Yeah. But what goes into the trials and error process from conception to mm. launch? Uh, how many times and how many various incarnations that, were there before that one? That's a great question. We, we start at the development of our, our brands in a cask program. So it's very popular here. Camera has really been at, at the forefront of it. And a lot of the great places like London Pub, um, the Wolf and Hound, uh, uh, the Whip, uh, carry casks. And uh, so the brewers actually brew an entire brew in a 40-liter barrel of beer, or, or a firkin or a, or a cask, as we call them. And, um, and so we actually try some brews through that program. And then we judge basically what the consumers like. Did they like it? Did they not like it? And if they like it, we... The, it goes to the second level where Jack does a, a test brew at the brewery and uh, we do an internal test and then we go we actually go full hog at that point and do brew to uh, 20,000 liters very cool and uh, while we have you and just before we let you go uh, 2011 we're just embarking on 2011 yeah. now what uh, what's Russell got in store for 2011 actually it's a, very, big picture. It's a, it's a very exciting year for us uh, we, we, we enjoyed a, a pretty good growth in in, uh, in 2010 we had a 30% 38% to increase in sales this year, our primary focus is on the uh, on on maintaining our core brands, which is our cream ale, our honey, uh, the the extra special lager, and so on. But at the same time, expanding our brewmaster series, like our IPA, the We Angry Scotch Ale, and developing a what we call specialty beer or super premium category, mm-hmm. uh, where we're going to do corked beer, uh, barrel aged, uh, bottle conditioned. So our goal this this year is to do 500 hex of barrel aged and 500 hex of uh, just uh, super premium. What about uh, just I'm just going to throw this out here. Yeah, yeah. What about just here for the beer radio logger? Really? There we go. That sounds fantastic. Yeah, I think yeah. you can work on that for the next show. I could. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to convince it to be an ale, but anyway, an we'll ale. See. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's such a pleasure to have uh, pleasure Russell Brewing Company yeah. on board, and yeah. the timing could be better. Blood Alley Bitter is yeah. in stores today. Yeah. And Andrew Harris, a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. You're listening to Just Here for the Beer Radio, Canada's only dedicated beer radio hour. It's sponsored in part by the King's Head Tavern in Kitsilano, a Vancouver institution since 1973. The all-new King's Head offers live music Thursday to Sunday, the legendary Beggar's Breakfast, 15 varieties of wings, the King's Head Tavern on U Street in Kitsilano.